Greetings and welcome back to Haftarot, the weekly video cast in which we take a look at the upcoming week's Haftarah, try to understand its message and its association with Kriyat HaTorah that it follows. My name is Yitzhak at Shalom, and I'm delighted to be looking at this week's Haftarah, the Haftarah of Parshat Kitavo. And again, as we've seen over the past number of weeks, the Haftarah is not related to the Kriyat HaTorah, except in the generic sense that I spoke about a few weeks ago. Uh, and rather it is part of the general nechama that's found in the second half of the book of Shayahu. And this is the, the Haftarah this week is the entire chapter 60, a relatively long chapter in this collection of 22 Psukim, uh, which, uh, which expresses uh, not only hope, but a beautiful image of what life is going to be like after the consolation. We're now moving in the console in, in, the, in the process of comfort from being comforted from the loss to already the visions of grandeur which await us after we return. And you can see uh, here in this Haftarah as an example, the nations will all serve you and the nations that don't serve you will be lost, will be destroyed. Uh, they're all going to bring their wealth to you. I'm Eretz Yisrael and Am Yisrael is going to be a, uh, a beacon but also a, a magnet for the wealth and the, and the splendor of the world to come. If you take a look at a, an earlier passage in Pasuk Dalet, look around and see. Your children are all coming back to you, speaking to Yerushalayim. Your sons, your daughters are coming from a distance. They are coming to be close to you. Right? And then, all of these, the nations are going to come. Kvod halvanon, we hear, we see here. Um, and in Pasuk Tedvav, very much to the point, tacha teotech azuva usnua, in place of you being abandoned and hated, ve'en over, nobody's coming to visit you, the description in Eicha. Samtich ligon olam, sos Now you're going to be the pride of the world and the, the joy of every generation. And again, this continues. The last two psukim, uh, bear special attention. Your nation are all tzaddikim. Le'olam Yeshu Aretz. They will inherit the land. Neitzer mata'ai ma'asei adai li'pa'er. That which the shoots of that which I planted, the image of a of a, a plant shooting forth is used throughout the Nevi'im, especially in Yeshayahu, in the earlier part of Yeshayahu, as the messianic expectation. Ma'asei adai li'pa'er. That which I have created in order to create glory. The small one will be great. And this is the part that I want to take a look at. I am God. And in its time, I will make it happen fast. What does that mean? In its time, I'll make it happen fast. So Chazal, both in the Babli and the Shalmi, identified the inherent contradiction in that statement. Amar Rebbe Alexandri said, Rishuban Levi Rami. Rishuban Levi, and I have the translation on the side here, Rabbi Shuvan Levi identified a contradiction. It says that I will re re redeem you in its time, and it says I will speed it up. So that's a contradiction. So the resolution to this is that if Am Yisrael merits it, it will be speedy. In other words, there's a set time we're supposed to be redeemed. But Am Yisrael can speed that time up through merit, and if not, it'll happen in its time. Which if you think about the tremendous consolation behind those words, that even if Am Yisrael doesn't make the move, the time will come when HaKadosh Baruch Hu will redeem us. This, of course, is famously the position of Rabbi Yeshua um, and uh, of many among Chazal and since who maintain that the redemption is an inevitable process. Whether or not Am Yisrael participates, it'll happen differently. If Am Yisrael participates, it'll happen more speedily, perhaps, perhaps more calmly, but it will happen in any case, right? As opposed to Rabbi Yezer's position, which is, if Am Yisrael does tshuva, they're redeemed, and if not, not. And a parallel passage right afterwards, Amma Rabbi Alexandri, again, Rabbi Shuman Levi Rami, he identified that Rabbi Shuman Levi pointed out a contradiction. So this is from Daniel. He says he's come, that the, the one who's like a son of man is coming down from the clouds. Glorious vision. And in Zechariah Tet, famous pasuk, 
the king is coming as a poor man riding on a donkey. So who is it? Is Mashiach going to be some superstar or some very humble person? The answer is again, Zachur Iman and Ishmaya. If I'm Yisrael merits, then it'll be a super moment. Lo Zachur Ani Rochev Al Hamor. If they don't merit it, then it'll be a poor man riding on a donkey. In other words, it'll happen one way or the other. Question is, when? And now in this second passage, the question is, how? So, of course, it's incumbent upon us to take a look at this and say, well, we need to do what we can to make the world a better place, to follow the dictates of Torah law, and to, to, to be led by the values the Torah inculcates in us, in order to make the world more worthy so that redemption should happen both sooner and should also happen in a more glorious way, uh, as opposed to the poor man riding on the donkey. Let us have a wonderful Shabbat and prepare ourselves for the upcoming Yom HaZikaron, thinking about how we can indeed start to bring this vision to the world. Shabbat Shabbat.